Is this frequency open? Is this frequency open? CQ, 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 WX0, MIK, Whiskey X-Ray 0, Mike India Kilo. CQ, 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 WX0, MIK. Hello and welcome to the next edition of the Michael's Podcast. This is the Dog Days of Podcasting edition for August 27th, 2019. I am Mike Wills, or WX0MIK, and uh, this season we are talking about amateur radio and how uh, to, uh, well, basically, hopefully by the end you can get your technician license. So I'm sure I'll trim this up a little bit, but at the very beginning, I found a new addiction. (laughs) There is, and I didn't quite get it before, but now I start playing with it. Uh, So there's this thing, uh, if you go to websdr.org, so that is web as in a website, W-E-B-S-D-R, as in Software Defined Radio, S-D-R.org. Um, if you go out there, there's a bunch of people that, um, bunch of places that have set up these software defined radio systems. I found this service that you can get hop on and you can, uh, play with it yourself and, um, s- just to see what it looks like. Um, that's really kind of cool and kind of fun actually. So, um, yeah, I would. This is free. You don't have to have a um, a license to go out there and look at this or play with this. So if you're kind of interested in the whole HF thing, go out there and play with it. And I'm actually looking at on on Amazon. There's a, how was it called again? It's called a um, RTL-SDR blog V3. I'm not sure what the blog part is for, but. I'm looking at getting a uh, software divine radio. Uh, it's receive only, so you don't have to worry about you know all the other issues that come with it. But it is capable of receiving anywhere from any of the HF frequencies all the way up into like microwaves. So it could be a fun toy to play with. Best of all, it's thirty bucks. So I'm looking at getting one of those, and uh, despite what my wife may want, <laughs> I might want to put up a H or a, a, a dipole antenna up on somewhere, and uh, see what I can play with. Because I may not be able to afford um, a radio at a new one for like a thousand bucks for st- uh, what most people have been going with, actually like twelve hundred bucks at least I can get on at $30 and start listening. It's actually starting out to be kind of fun. So I'll have to see here. Um, the problem is, again, Billy making a HF antenna. So, eh, we'll uh, start. You, you got to start somewhere. And if you want to keep it cheap, you can keep it cheap. So, um, let's continue on to the actual content. Now we're five minutes in. Uh, we are now up to chapter nine of the ARRL Ham Radio License Manual for Technician. Um, and 9.1 is actually talking about electrical safety. So, electrical safety. You, you might ask, what does electrical safety have to do with amateur radio? Well, you know, if you're... If you've worked with electricity in the past, probably you don't have to worry about too much of this 
in general. They want you to make sure that you kind of mitigate uh, potential hazards for um, shock and high power voltage and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, they're all, they're kind of stressing that hey, you know, you could kill yourself by some of these large currents. So do be careful. Um, they kind of cover some of the avoiding electrical hazards, and um, they have some for some of you uh, geeks out there who like uh, stats. They have uh, effects of electric current in the human body, and what kind of um, current can it handle? And then they have uh, in some points there's a breakdown of uh, w- men versus women as well. And so it's, um, it's kind of interesting, also kind of scary, but it kind of gives you a heads up. Uh, one thing that they make sure to point out when working with electricity, electricity or electrical components, and you who work with electrical components probably already know this, but a capacitor can be extremely dangerous even without power. So be careful. And they also mention using a grounding stick. To ground and um, draw out the power within the capacitor, so you it's a little safer to work with. Um, they also mentioned removing jewelry. Most of this stuff, if you worked anything with uh, electrical components in the past, should be pretty much self-explanatory. And then they talk about AC safety grounding to make sure that you're actually properly grounding. They talk about the correct wire sizes for your uh, your wire. Um, all important stuff if you're looking at doing, doing your own wiring. Um, you know, in general, your standard household wiring at 15 amps is 14 gauge wire. Your 20 amp uh, circuits are tip should be 12 uh, amp wire or 12. 12 AG, AWG wire, um, number, tw- number 12 wire. That's what the word is looking for. It's going to be one of those nights. And then on up from there. Um, and then like I have an extension cord that's uh 10, that's number 10 wire because I need to be able to, um, hook up my 20 amp. Well, actually, it's 30 amp, but to at least draw 20 amps out for my camper. So I use that as well. Um, They talk about more about the safety stuff. They talk about the GFCI circuits. I'm kind of going through this real quick. Mostly, one, because of time. But mostly because most of this should be somewhat common sense if you've done any kind of electrical work. Um, They talk about lightning protection. And... um, they kind of say, well, e- you know, even though your antenna doesn't necessarily get struck any more often than your tall trees, you should take some some protection. And then they talk about some of the different things to do with that and so on. <laughs> kind of make it a, a real quick one here. But um, in most cases, it's it's good sense stuff. Uh, lightning protection is uh, something that I need to research a little bit more of myself as I look at putting up antennas and towers and so on. Well, quote in quote tower. <clears throat> really, I'm just, uh, I plan on using some electrical conduit, stack it up, somehow support it, and use that as a uh, antenna. So that's kind of my plan with that. Um, yeah, I think that is all I had for today. So, um, if you want to go out and play with a web SDR, that is kind of a a cool thing to, to play with. With the impending hurricane that looks like it's going to be hitting Florida, there's a couple different ways that you can, um, follow along if you want to, especially in the... The um, amateur radio bands. So option one, and unfortunately, you I think you you well, I think you actually have to be licensed amateur. So this may not be a good option. But option one is to use the app called Come On Brain Echo Link, and with an Echo Link, if you can get in. 
uh, look for the channel called WX underscore talk. So it's at, actually it's asterisk WX underscore talk. I'll put this in the show notes. Uh, I'll actually try to put it in the show notes this time. Um, if you, you can look at that and then that is one way. And I'm not sure what that covers per se. But then on the other hand, you have the HF stuff. Well, this web SDR site does not require an HF or a um, amateur license. Anybody can go to this website. So you, you go to this website and I, I could have looked at my link, but let's go to the net procedures. Um, so if you go to hwn.org, so hurricanewatchnet.org, HWN, or just Google it. Uh, if you go to their net procedures, they list out the two um, frequencies that they use. Now, if you remember from your training back a ways, uh, USB is upper sideband and LSB is lower sideband. So you got to make sure to configure this for e each of these correctly. But if you go to these bands and the um, the 40 meter band is 4.0 or 7.6268. And in the web SDR software, actually you're entering this in as kilohertz. So you would enter in 7,268. And then at night, you can listen to these, um, everyone talking. And uh, let's see, you know, this is what looks like someone's talking right now. And then you'll hear something like this. So I would highly suggest you go out there and at least uh, take a listen to it and it maybe actually be kind of fascinating to hear how much the amateur radio actually works in combination with um, the National Hurricane Center, the um, like Red Cross and FEMA and all these organizations working together to ensure communications are happening. And I believe the hurricane is targeted to hit somewhere around Saturday so far. And that's just, you know, it's, it's, a, it's almost a week out yet. So you got, you don't know exactly what's going to happen yet. But um, I would uh, suggest uh, at least checking it out. And if you're in Florida area... Um, might not be worth or might be worth taking a look at it. Or if you can Amazon really quick, get uh, the, the $30, well, get the either the SDR uh, radio thing that you hook up to your, to your computer, or you just get a Bofang $30 radio, tune it into the Serenet that I mentioned about previously. And start listening to the ham radio communications that happen because, you know, information is the hardest thing to get when you can't get communications. Now, it's looking like this would be like a category one. So it should, couldn't be in quote too bad, but it's still disastrous. So if you are in Florida, I would suggest maybe at least taking a look at that and programming in uh, the main repeaters in your area, including Serenet in Florida and um, listening in. And if you have in reliable internet, you can pop into the web SDR like this or um, the other net um, <laughs> echo link and uh, at least uh, follow along what's happening. So, um, Tomorrow we're going to talk about RF in your station, which is not a good thing. And um, talk to you tomorrow. So um, until then, uh, this is WX0MIK. And uh, I think the frequency, well, it's extremely busy on 80 meters tonight. In your ears, it's now clear. The frequency is clear. WX0MIK73.